So my name is Sven Lux. Uh, I'm the uh, chair of the uh, well, the project lead. I'm joined uh, this morning by Dennis, uh, who's the authoring uh, tool uh, technical lead, and by Mike Palmer, who is leading on the design of the authoring tool. Um, and both of both of those um, will show you uh, some items. Um, we are going to be recording this session, so if uh, <laughs> if you've missed it, then you can go to the YouTube channel and uh, have a look there. Um, but of course, everybody else can see it there too. Um, the, the great thing about being here right now uh, is that you can ask questions at the end. So we're probably running about 15 minutes just to give you the demonstrations, and then we'll take questions. And with that, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Dennis. Morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dennis Heaney. Uh, as Sven says, I'm the technical lead on the authoring tool. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to take you through uh, some of the screens today. So as you can see, it's we're very much in beta at the moment, it's in development, but uh, hopefully you'll see that we've, we've come quite far. So I'll just log in. It's an online tool, as you know, so... Uh, well, here it is. This is your dashboard. As you can see, I've created a, a little course already, a demo course, but I'm going to uh, take you through building a course from the ground up. I just wanted to show you quickly, uh, well, asset management. Um, so uh, you can upload assets and manage them, uh, can filter and search them, like we have images, audio files, video files. So um, I'll just show you quickly how that works. So add a new asset, choose a file, upload a little video, go open. You can also tag your assets. So. Um, what we, we don't have at the moment is a, a filter for assets on the front end so that you can actually select what assets and uh, courses are showing, but uh, that's coming very soon. You can see this is the one we just, added, uh, we just added, and you get a little preview of your video. So that's asset management. I'll show you quickly plugin management as well. So uh, if you're familiar with the uh, with uh, the ADAPT framework, you'll know that uh, there are extensions and components and themes all, all built by community members. Um, so we have uh, already on the tool, when you, when you install it, you have uh, the, core, the core extensions and components and themes uh, pre-installed. Uh, as you can see here, accordion, blank, graphical, multiple choice, question, all those are available for editing and, uh, and using in your courses and a theme. You can also, if you're if you're developing a plugin and you, you want to try it out in the authoring tool, you can actually upload it. This is a little one built a while back, so we'll upload that. It's a little component, and you'll see that it uh, shows here on our list. So we'll be able to actually add that to our course and use it later, which is kind of cool. So um, I'll actually take you through a course from the ground up first. So we'll say my course and add some body. This is a rich text editor. And again, you can asset and you can set, uh, set, uh, sorry, tag and, uh, and set visibility settings for it. So we'll double click to go. We'll double click to go into the course. Um, so I, the I'm not going to go into too much detail on uh, the structure of an adapt course. Um, uh, if you're familiar with the framework, you, you probably already know uh, how a course is made up and, uh, and what the different elements of it are. Um, but this is kind of like your, your menu builder. You can add a section. Uh, you can add a page. Uh, within, a, within a section, you can add another page, and so on. I just want to make uh, this, this continues on as, as, much as, you, as much as you want. Um, but I'm only interested today in doing a single page course, so I'll just get rid of these. So let's get rid of that one. Okay, and we can uh, edit the properties of this page. Save it. Okay, I'll just show you quickly as well. You can actually, if you have more than one theme on the system, you can come here and, and switch themes. We only have the one theme at the moment. So, uh, so I double click to go into create my page. As I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the structure of an adapt course. I'm just going to add a very simple text component on our first page. We'll make it full width. Uh, so we save that. We can actually go save and edit directly. Let's say my first text block. 
uh, as I said, uh, this is a rich text component, uh, or text or field, I should say. And I can have, I can have bold text. In italic. You know how all this works, so I don't want to do that. Not spend too much time on that. Uh, bullet points also. Save that, and you'll see uh, some of our components. We have uh, a little preview of what you're getting. So it's very much a sort of uh, structure content builder. It's not WYSIWYG because, as you know, uh, Adapt is a is a is a responsive. Uh, Adapt courses are responsive, so uh, WYSIWYG doesn't really make sense in that context. But as you can see, we built a quick little course, and I'm just going to run a preview of that course. So uh, the first time you run a preview, it's uh, it's copying all the course files into place, so it takes a little bit longer. But once you've actually run a preview uh, the first time, uh, any subsequent edits to the course are very quickly uh, very quickly populated into the course. So here you go. You have an Adapt course. You go into the page, and here we have your text block. So this is a responsive Adapt course. course. I just thought I'd show you that, all the different mobile views and so on. And we'll go back. So I want to show you as well how we configure some of the more complex features, such as extensions. So for my course, I can uh, I can add an extension. Let's say we'll add the page level progress. Okay. So I'll go back here and I'll add a new section to the course. I'll block a component. Again, I'm just going to use the text component. Double click in here to edit. If I can spell correctly. Um, so here, if uh, the component has any uh, uh, any configurable properties, you can edit them in here. We've just added the page level progress extension, as you can see. Properties for that show here, so we'll set this one to true, save, and preview again. Um, so when we go into this page, you'll see our little progress bar up here. And once we scroll down into our page, we should see this completing. Yeah. Well, that gives you a quick view of how it works anyway. Um, so possibly the MG's not working on that component. Uh, and that's that's really it, I think. Uh, Since there's anything else, I don't think there's much else we really need to see, is there? Or that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, do you have anything like that? I was just seeing the the drag and drop functionality. Ah, yeah. So, now. for example, uh, we'll, we'll come in here and uh, edit a page. Um, so let's say uh, your all your components are 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 full width or. Or left and uh, or they can show in left and right in a particular block. So as you can see, we can actually just drag this down into there, or we can move it up into the left hand side and uh, into the right hand side. So that's quite nice, just to, to change the structure. Of course, thanks for that, Mike. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Mike now. This, as you can see, this is a a, a work in progress, and it doesn't look as pretty as it could. So. Uh, we're in the process of uh, making making the builder look more like Mike's wireframes as well as all the other lovely functionality we're adding. So Mike's going to show you eventually what the, the tool is going to look like, so I'll hand over now. Thanks very much, Dennis. So as Dennis has taken us through all of the, the functionality of the authoring tool, uh, I'd like to show you some of the designs that we, we've been working on so far this week. Um, let's just put this into full screen. So starting off from a standard type of login page, I've uh, got the ability to jump into create an account um, or uh, login. Very minimal branding, very focused just on the content. Stepping into creating an account, we immediately start to present the authoring tool um, in the format that you'll find throughout all of the other pages. So we have a very consistent um, formula where all of the, the actual content is displayed on the, on the right in the main panel, and all of the actions um, are displayed on the left. 
Um, we're always trying to put a focus on the primary action through each of these panels. In this instance, it's creating an account. So jumping into the dashboard, uh, we've got a number of things going on with the dashboard. Obviously, the, the primary action is to, is to add a new course. But we've got a lot of um, functionality to help you find the courses once you've created them. So you can search by keyword, you can go through, you can filter by tags, you can view by categories, you can jump in to edit the categories that you've created. Uh, and you've got the various options to view the courses themselves. You can view them in this nice grid view, which is very minimal, focused upon um, the visuals um, presented within a course. Um, you can order this from A to Z, or Z to A, or by category, by published date, last updated date, things like that. Or you could switch it into list view. Uh, list view presents uh, a lot more information around the course. Um, the exact details of what it is, is we haven't quite figured out yet, but it, it gives you the ability to see a lot more meta details around the course, as well as seeing the tags, being able to add new tags, modify the tags that are there as well. If you were to double click onto the course, you then start to step into the actual course structure. Um, now this page is, is kind of accepted that you're, you've gone through a process here, you've had a look through some of these folders, some of these sections. Um, again, it's following the very much the, the prescribed method where it's all of the content is on the right, and we've got the basic kind of functions over here on the left. Stepping into the page structure, we are showing again, this is very much the, the page that Dennis was taking us through with the drag and drop. Um, here we've got the, the ability to, again, kind of move things around, to edit things, to collapse various sections to make it easier. Um, you can jump into by clicking on add a component, add a block, add an article. If we clicked on add a component, you then take into the screen where you can see all of the components that are available. Um, this would be a scrollable list. The idea being that you can grab hold of a component and you can drag it and you can drop it on one of the areas at the top. Once you've made your selection, it's then we've only got an option now to place a component on the right, so the interface is only showing you the actions that you can feasibly achieve. Uh, if I pick this accordion back up, then I would get presented again with the, the, th the three options of where I wanted to place it. So it gives you the ability to choose both components or a single component in one view. I can either then save the selection, jump straight back to the course structure, uh, sorry, course page, or I can save and edit. Um, if you've got multiple items, we're, we're thinking about taking you into, uh, sorry, so this is when you jump back to page structure, you can see the components that I've both selected on the page. If I went to um, save, and edit of a single component, it takes me into that component. Um, there's lots of different um, pages of information that would need to be edited within a component. Some of them are configuration settings, some of them are content based. So we haven't set um, a specific layout for this and we've put it for um, individuals to be able to decide what information they want displayed on the page at one time. So we have this filtering um, option so you can switch various parts of the component on to view on the page at one time. So it may be that you just want to see the general information so you could switch the other ones off. Um, it just tries to keep the page a little bit shorter and a bit more succinct but it also allows people to work in whatever way they, they feel comfortable working in. If you had added two components to your page, again, it's very, very similar, but you've got the options to um, edit both of the components from this, this one type of view. Um, some of the other options off of the, the course page is, is stepping into configuration. Again, it's using a very similar design language. So we've always got forms laid out in a very consistent way on the right-hand side. We're always presenting clearly and consistently the, the functions and the primary actions on the left-hand side. Again, this is the theme settings that Dennis was showing on the authoring tool. These have kind of been um, jazzed up a little bit with various kind of screenshots that a theme might come with. Uh, I think we, we have as well options to, to edit or duplicate themes um, through this, this, this cog action here, uh, cog item. And then finally, the course extensions, being able to switch on and off course extensions. Um, again, we can see what extensions are, are enabled by using the filter or, or what are available. And we show a very large visual clue as to what's switched on and what's switched off. 
So those are the designs as they stand at the minute. Um, they are very much a work in progress, um, but it gives us a good representation of how we're going to take the, the authoring tool as it stands at the minute um, and apply a design which will help the user experience um, and the flow through the system. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. That's, that's great. So uh, as we said, um, we wanted to give you a very, very quick run through, and I think uh, we've done that. So thank you very much, Dennis and Mike. Um, the, uh, the, the next thing really is to say that um, what you've seen is work in progress and the designs. We are uh, going to uh, release the authoring tool within 2014, i.e. before the end of this year. And what we're releasing will be a 0 0.1, i.e. an early release. Um, the functionality of that will be what we believe is the most important, uh, uh, but, but still basic set of functionality. Now, everything is really listed on the um, Adapt Learning community site. And I just want to show you that in case you haven't seen it. I very much like to encourage everybody uh, to, to visit us here. Uh, there's a forum. Uh, it's, uh, it's well staffed. There's a growing community um, who are all very active. So if you've got any questions, um, please, do, please do come and visit us.